Hello, my name is Blake, and in this video we are going to cover how to install Keycloak on Linux and configure basic settings for use with Cinnamon. This is part one in a two-part video series that's going to show you how to set up an identity provider and use that identity provider with Cinnamon for user management. This is going to be using OAuth and OpenID Connect. There are many identity providers on the market, however, Keycloak is open source and free, so for the purpose of this example, that's what we're going to be using. However, Cinnamon can integrate with any identity provider that supports OAuth and OpenID Connect. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering setting up a Keycloak server from scratch. If you already have a Keycloak server configured, or have another identity provider that you use, you can skip through most of this video or proceed to the next video in the series. It's important to remember that many of the steps we are going to cover in this video are designed to get you up and running quickly. In a production environment, you may want to configure your Keycloak server differently based on the best practices outlined on their website or to conform to your organization's policies. So let's jump in. You can start by downloading the appropriate version of Keycloak from their website. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the bare metal version. Once I have the package onto my Linux server, I'm going to extract it and run the installer. The first time you run Keycloak, you're going to need to go to the web portal at localhost to configure the admin account. However, since this is a headless Linux environment, we can't open a browser to localhost on this machine. So we have a few options. We can either set the admin credentials as environment variables, or we can open an SSH tunnel using an application like PuTTY. I'm going to use the environment variable method so that we don't have to do anything from any other window. The two environment variables we need to set are very specific, so make sure you type them properly. The first environment variable is for the admin username, so I'm going to type the following. Export keycloak admin equals admin. Next, I need to set the password, so I'm going to type export keycloak admin password equals password. You can set these values to whatever you want, I'm just going to leave them as default. Once that's done, I can actually start up the Keycloak instance by running the start script inside the Keycloak bin folder, as you'll see here. All right, so now that Keycloak's running, I can connect via browser to the running Keycloak instance. By default, this is running on port 8080, and now I'm gonna log in as admin. Once we're in as admin, I now need to set up my Realm, client, scopes, users, and roles, so that Cinnamon can fetch users from Keycloak. The first step is to configure our Realm. I'm going to mouse over the Realm tab here and click Add Realm. Next, specify a Realm name to distinguish this from other Realms. And in this example, I'm just going to name this Realm Cinecloak Production. Now that our Realm's set up, we need to create a client. Click the Clients tab, and then click the Create button. For the Client ID field, specify a name to distinguish this client from other clients. And in this example, I'm going to set my Client ID to Cinecloak Production Client. Click Save, and now we need to configure this. First, we need to make sure the access type is set to public. Next, we need to make sure that the standard flow is enabled, and we want to disable the device authorization grant. Next, we need to specify a valid redirect URI. This is the fully qualified domain name of your Cinnamon, the port it's running on, followed by slash app. For example, I can use HTTPS files.mycompany.com colon 6443 slash app, and you can even add multiple redirect URIs to handle different connections. For example, I can also add HTTP localhost 6060 slash app for localhost access, and I'm gonna do that now. Next, we need to scroll down and drop down the menu for OpenID Connect compatibility modes and enable the Use Refresh Tokens option. And finally, under the Advanced Settings dropdown, set S256 from the dropdown for Proof Key Code Exchange Challenge method. After that, hit Save. Now we need to go to the Client Scopes tab and make sure that the default client scopes include email, profile, and roles. In the optional client scopes, make sure that microprofile-jwt and offline access are also assigned. 
Now that our client's set up, we need to create our users. Click on the Users tab and click Add User. Here we're going to fill in some information about the user. However, it is important that the user at least have a username, email, and first and last name. Make sure that this user is enabled. And for the purpose of this example, make sure that the email verified is disabled. In a production environment, you may do this differently. When you're done, click Save. In the Credentials tab, temporarily assign this user a password. And as I just mentioned, in a production environment, you may want to have the user create their own password. And there are a few methods of doing this that you can read about on Keycloak's website. And that's actually all we need for now. Remember, in a production environment, you may want to configure your Keycloak server slightly differently. Many of the steps we've just covered will give you the basics of getting this up and running. I recommend checking out Keycloak's documentation for best practices. Now, we need to actually set up Cinnamon so that it can integrate with Keycloak using OAuth and OpenID Connect to verify users.